fringe engages in. This year, I've got a new metaphor for you. On Sunday, uh, those of you who, who live in Edinburgh and the others of you who may be staying until then, Edinburgh celebrates the end of all the festival world as we know it in Edinburgh for the month, the end of July and, and August, with a massive fireworks event. Really, where the fireworks are over, inside, and underneath the castle. It is actually it's a marvellous event uh, to music. Uh, so one metaphor for the repository fringe for this year that I'd like to suggest to you is that, this, is that your thinking should be all about fireworks, about setting the world alight, about providing firecracker thoughts, things that will light up the skies. But I want to just push the metaphor, just bear with me, I'm going to push the metaphor a little bit further. If you're in Edinburgh on Sunday, um, there are two ways to see the fireworks. You can go into Princess Street Gardens and pay about £10. And about, I think it's something between five and 10,000 people do that. But most people, probably about a quarter of a million people, watch the fireworks in an open fireworks sort of way, uh, by standing all over Edinburgh on any high ground, any vantage point, and to watch the display. So perhaps we should think of the repository fringe as the open fireworks event. It's quite interesting because <coughs> you, you have to think about the payment models. Somebody has to pay for the fireworks, as somebody has to pay for much of the content that we are talking about in some way or another. And the fireworks are effectively paid for by the 5,000 people who pay their £10 to get into Prince Street Gardens, but that obviously isn't very much at all. Other than that, it's paid for by the sponsor, who happens to be the Bank of Scotland, and therefore is largely owned by us, um, <laughs> and by the City of Edinburgh, again, public sector. So there's something very much about the public good in this fireworks event, that, every, that a quarter of a million people can see these fireworks, although some people have got to pay, but most of it is from the public sector. So that's a little bit of a metaphor, pushing it very far, far there, but you might like to think of this event as being an open fireworks event, thinking about the openness of nature, of, of the, the open nature of what you're talking about, about how it has to be paid for in some way, and thinking about how it, the fireworks light up the sky. Sorry for that rather extended metaphor, but I just thought it was uh, rather fun, and I had quite fun last night trying to work that out. Um, so, um, a word about the repository fringe event. This event is arranged by the University of Edinburgh, various parts including ADENA, the Digital Curation Centre, the National e Science Centre and the Library, um, demonstrating the great strength of interest in repositories in Edinburgh, in this university. We're also grateful to GISC for supporting the event. The Edinburgh Festival has been going on for about 60 years. The repository fringe has been going for three years. Um, and it's time to take stock of the event, as they do with the Edinburgh Festival uh, almost every year. Um, the organisers want your view about the event, about the format, and about the importance of the event. Uh, so I know that at the end of the conference, many people neglect to fill in the feedback form. But this time, we want you to fill in the feedback form, and not to think about how good the sandwiches were, but to actually think about whether the event should go on, the value of the event, uh, in your world. Uh, it would be very useful to get sort of comments about how the event should go on. And now to the programme. Uh, there's a wonderful programme with presentations with Pecha Kucha, uh, which I, is pronounced in different ways in different conferences. So uh, uh, Pecha Kucha, I think, is the right pronunciation of this conference. Uh, <laughs> is that correct, James? Correct, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's, not the, it's not the Wikipedia uh, the pronunciation. No, they're wrong. <laughs> uh, there are round table events and James has asked me to uh, get, ask you to sign up to these events over coffee. Yeah, there'll be a poster downstairs which we'd like to indicate which one you might be interested in, uh, primarily because we only have you know, rooms of limited size, so if everybody wants to go to one, we'll need to move it into one room. If only a few people want to go to one, we'll move it to another room and so forth. So if you've got that, sign up for round table events. And there's also lots of opportunities for networking. Um, so, I now have the pleasure of introducing the first uh, speaker, the keynote speaker, Tony Hurst. Uh, Tony is a lecturer in the Department of Communications and Systems at the Open University and a regular blogger. 
His background is in electronics and artificial intelligence, which he is all, uh, and, and which, in which subjects he has authored many OU courses, and most recently one on computer game design and appreciation. He's passionate about open and lifelong learning. Um, uh, he's a self-proclaimed mashup artist, giving regular workshops and conference presentations on how to create novel services from freely available web tools and applications. Perhaps fireworks, actually. Yeah. Um, including a widely circulated map-based uh, map visualization of NP's travel expenditure expenses last year. He's actually challenged, uh, uh, interestingly for me, he's challenged librarians about the changing world of information. And we certainly need this, but actually I think some of our users in some areas also need to understand the new world that we're in. So I now invite Tony to give our first session. Uh, when he, I hope he challenges us and gives us some fireworks to think about. Absolutely.